Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm looking at Clara Reed. Now I'm looking at Clara Reed Pro, there's also Clara Reed Stand and a few other versions. With Clara Reed Pro you get the scaling options, optical character recognition. So we'll have a look at that as well. So I want to go through the basics and show you what you can do with Clara Reed. Proofreading is one. Scanning OCR. It can does your spellings, does your homophones, words are the same, phonetically the same, they have different meanings. It's got a dictionary, it's got extras, you can save text as an audio file or video. Prediction's pretty good as well because you can choose specific dictionaries or even add your own words to what you're studying so it starts predicting before you as you're typing in. Which is good just to visualise your work or great for spelling. Also we'll have a look, look at the extras there, for example, Claro Capture, Claro View. So I'm gonna start from left to right. Now first thing before we do anything, if I get the mouse you can see, hold the left button, I can drag this bar around. Now normally when you start Claro for the first time, it's going to be stuck in one point. It's going to be locked to the active window. So let me show you. If I go to Settings, I want you to select the View tab. If this is ticked, then Claro will be locked to the active window. In this case, Claro Bowl will be locked to the top of Word 2013. But I tend to unlock it. I prefer to unlock it. Click OK. Also, when you first start Claro, you might find your prediction is unchecked, as so. Press it down to make sure it's checked. Click OK. So now if I hold the left button and drag that to the top, it locks in. And I prefer it there than just hanging on to the active window. So anything you open will be underneath it. If you want to undock it, just click the undock button there and it will undock again. So let's start from left to right. The first thing I'm going to show you is the scanning option. Again, it uses optical character recognition and I'm using the OptiBook 3600. It's all plugged in. Now before you actually start using your scanner, I want you to go to the settings option and end tab to the right, select scan. Now I prefer to keep original format as you scan. If you click simplify, it will just simplify the scan for your page. Any tables that will get rid of it just simplifies it, it makes it easier. But I like to keep the correct formatting. But if you simplify it sometimes, it moves around the text where you don't want it to. So keep original format. Show graphics always useful a lot of graphics within books language there English you choose your required language now I prefer to have a preview scan first what this does is it brings up a window so you can check it and I'll show you that as we go along so you can choose what is graphics what is tables and what is images proofread before converting always handy to proofread is all correct and few results now before you even start I want you to select run scanner setup wizard check your scanners installed click next and then click next again then I want you to find your driver there if it doesn't exist I want you to click the add scanner option there as I'm using Twain optical book click next I'm going to leave yes recommended settings and then click next again and this window will pop up we can do a basic scan test if we want, just to check it's all scanning properly. You can follow that including your grey scan test and does a colour scan test. So I'm just going to click next and click next again. And it's going to do a quick scan and check my scan is working OK. So this window will pop up and it then go through a number of scans. So I'm going to click auto. And now the scan begins, and I can go through the tests. And there's my first scan. Now go through this as you check all your scanners picking up good and the colours are right. If there's anything missing, click missing image. I've just asked you to check you put a document down correctly and you can scan again to check that. But I'm going to click cancel not go through all the scanning options and I'm going to quit but I do recommend you going through them if you're using a scanner for the first time now I'm ready to scan I've got a book in my scanner so I'll go up to scan and I want to choose the first option scan from paper which is for my scanner left click and now I'm going to start scanning what I'm actually going to scan it into I'm going to use OCR which does it automatically and convert it into a word document and now it's copying it over. I can choose to turn the book over on literature and scan more, but I'm not. I'm just going to click stop. If you do actually turn it over and add more pages, it will keep it as one big long document. 
and that's kind of handy if you want to save it all as an audio file or video as well or you just want to read back because it constantly reads without you having to open up other word documents but I'm going to click stop loading pages and you can see here it's converting it now at the option here we've got this window pop open Clara read pro preview if I go back to settings and scan the reason it's come up is because I've selected this option here if you don't have that option it will just convert straight to a word document open but I actually prefer that option because I can check it then to make sure it's looking okay for example you see T that stands for text and I've got this option here which is for images so for example as you might have seen some of my other OCR or video tutorials on you can choose for example if I click T then I can create a rectangle around what I see as text as so or it might be an image I see that as an image so you can choose that option if you prefer also you can rotate it left and right if required flip vertically and run. you might find sometimes I find sometimes it scans off and it comes around that direction so everything will be backwards if that happens with your text just click this button back and that will then can flip it vertically so it will be the right way around fit into window which is already doing we can draw ignore zones so I could say right I just want that ignored so you don't want the picture to show up and you can draw tables as well but I don't want it to show up so I'm going to click the image button and I've created a rectangle around so that will see that as an image all your scans will be listed here on the left so you can delete what you don't want by right clicking and clicking clear you can also select special odd numbers if that's all you want invert selection even place bookmarks there which I've done there so you can bookmark what you want as well but I'm just going to click OK I'm going to send that to a word document see it's converting and there's a proofreading option so now I can check the spelling and all the words exist so if I drag that over vitamins I'm going to ignore that that looks fine whole grain I'm going to ignore that and here suggestions I'm going to leave that all for now but you can proofread your word to make sure it's okay now I'm ready to send to word and it will now open up as a word document now if you want to go through all that remember if we go to settings scan you can then untick proofread before converting to text if you find that a bit of an issue and slowing you down entirely up to you so I'm going to click OK and here we go scroll down there's my images and text and if I click at the beginning I could then come up and use the playback button so I'm just going to press play and then I'm going to show you how to change the voice to slow it down starchy foods are filling without providing too many calories they are also a good source of nutrients like and click stop as you can see some of the text are disappearing as it's reading the reason is if I go to settings select advanced speech it's because I've got focus sentence so if I untick that click OK and do the same thing again the rest of the text won't disappear as it's reading starchy foods are filling without providing too many calories they are also I'll come back to the voices in that later in the settings but let's move on so now I'm going to go back to scan and I'm going to use the option scan from PDF. A lot of people tend to use portable document formats when you download online. Journals a lot as well are downloaded. How about we download them and use this program in Clara to convert them into a Word document. So then you can have them read back, save as an audio file, video or even just to highlight stuff. It gives you total control over that document. So I'm going to go to scan. I've got a PDF already saved in my history folder. <laughs> this time I'm going to select scan from PDF file left click once it's going to ask me where that PDF exists so obviously you would download them so I'm going to my documents and I should have a history folder here and there it is and I'm going to select my PDF by the way it will only show you portable document formats images it won't show you any other files because that's what it's looking for click open and you can see it's loaded in the PDFs. It also tells me how many pages are there. And there we go. I've got four. So now I'm ready to send them to Word if I want. You can check them again, go through them all. There's no images in this document, so that's not a problem. So I'm ready just to say 
center word and let it convert it and there we go let me scroll down we all now have it in the word document so again if I click at the beginning and click play the reign of King John was in always unlikely and in most dreadful he was so there you go, you've got full control over portable document formats. Also PDFs with images in it also convert. And you've also got full control over scanning from any document. Bear in mind, it can be a bit temperamental with certain fonts. But as a whole, it's pretty good. So now I'm going to go back to the scanning option, because there's another option there called Scan from Screen. Now let me demonstrate that. That's for any text. Scan from Screen. So I'll open up Google. What scan for screen will do, it will take any text from an image that you can't normally highlight and you can have it read back or you can copy and paste it into a Word document. What actually happens is it copies it into clipboard. Let me show you. So let me find somewhere a perfect example of where you can't highlight the text. I'm going to look at Google Books. Go Click on the first link and let's put any book in. Let's put history in and it will do. And then I'll need to find a book with a preview. So I'm going to scroll down. Here we go. And that will do the art of war in world history. Left click that. And it will give me a preview of the book. So there's some extracts from that book there. So if I hold the left button and scroll down. And that will do perfect. Now if you want you can zoom in and out with the zoom in and out option here. Also we can expand the screen. To see it better. Now, if I hold the left button and highlight that, you see I can't highlight anything. So this is where this option comes into play. Left click and select scan from screen. You could use a snipping tool, but it doesn't convert it into a Word document. This will. Hold the left button and then create a rectangle around the text you want. So I'll just put a rectangle around there. And then it convert to text. Now what it does, it copies it straight into clipboard, into memory as you would do with control C. So if it's in clipboard and I click play, it should play back. But now the conditions were quite different, for in the first place both consoles were with the army. And there you go, it's reading back. So if you need stuff read back online that you can't normally read because it's in image format, this will read it back for you. But there's more. Let me open up Word. If it's in clipboard, if I click control N, I can then paste that. So if I click control V to paste, and there's that text. Not always 100% accurate, but it's pretty good. And that way then, we can click on the beginning. If you prefer, you might even want to highlight parts. But now the conditions. And color code them. Or even just click on the beginning and decide to but click But now play. the conditions were quite different. For in the first place. So you can see how powerful that option is. It's good on ebooks as well, so have a little play with that. Now I'm going to the playback option here. Now we can change the voices and the speed. So what I'm going to do is go to the settings option. And we'll see we're in speech. I'm currently using Daniel. If I click the drop down menu, we have various voices. Depending on whether you've got Clara Standard or Clara Read Pro, some options you'll get, some you won't. I personally like Serena. But there are some good voices in there and some bad ones. It's all personal preference. The speed, if I hold the left button, I can drag it to the left. Now if I click test, I can have a listen. This is a test of the current voice. But I would test it in a document because the speed sounds different when it's actually reading back. Now you can choose to pour between words, so you can hear each word, and then there'll be a slight pause to the next word so you can hear it clearly. Or you can stop after each sentence if you require. So let's try that out. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click on the beginning share, and I'm going to click play. Share the danger them. Selves but had also induced the consoles of the previous year to remain and take part in TA. Not bad considering that text was just an image. But let me go back to your settings and let's go back to the speech options. I'm going to select advanced speech. Now you see it's reading back in blue. Now you might have a different colour. You might actually require a red, for example, so it reads back in red. And you might also decide that you want the focus sentence, which I showed you earlier. So if I click focus and click OK, it will read back in red, but it get rid of the rest of the text, so you only focus on what's reading back. So let me click on the beginning and click play to show you. Share the danger them selves, 
but had also induced the console. And click stop. Again, it's personal preference, but it can keep you focused on the text you're reading. Back to settings, and I'm going to select advanced speech again. But I'm going to uncheck that. Also, you might prefer a background, which you can. So if I untick no background, I can add a background. So let's add a yellow there. Click OK and have a look how it comes out. Click halfway down and click play. For the last two years, the conditions there for under... As you see, you've got total control. Go back to settings and advanced speech. So again, it's up to you how you want to use that. Also, highlighting options. You see it's highlighting a sentence. You might prefer just to highlight a word at a time. So if I click word, click OK. I'll start from that option there and click play. Consoles of the previous year to remain and... And you can see it's following highlighting each word as it goes along. Back to settings and advanced speech. Again, you can do word trail, sentence or paragraph. Let me show you word trail. Click OK. I want to click from beginning a while and click play. While the men had not only seen the arms or... And you can see it stays highlighted as it's reading. Another good way to focus on what you're doing. And there's a few options in your advanced speech. While I'm there, why don't I quickly show these options here on the left. You can also speak by highlighting text and automatically speak back for you. Also, speak under mouse. You can have speak under mouse when it hovers in Internet Explorer and Firefox. Doesn't work in Google Chrome, but you can still highlight the text and have it read back, but it won't highlight it. Or you can speak under mouse with all, then that way it will speak back everything. Also, when you're typing, you can choose whether you want it to repeat a word you've just typed here, words or just repeat characters or sentences. Also, echo dragon voice input. When you actually run using dragon, every time you dictate something, it can repeat the command you've just dictated. It's a good way to give you confidence when using dragon as well to make sure you put the correct command in. It works quite well, actually, I was using it earlier. But I'm gonna click the back button, and I'm then gonna click OK. So, there's your read back feature. Obviously when you're reading back, we can then stop that if required. Now, let's come to the fonts. This is like a shortcut to your ribbon in Word. So, let's have a look what font size we're on. We're on size 12, so if I click font and increase, you see it's gone to 14. Now, if I just want to highlight... Selves, but had all... Go to font and I can increase what I want individually as well. Also, you can use the decrease button as well. Again, it's just a shortcut to the ribbon on Word. Also, we have three fonts here that you can choose. Now, the default fonts are not the same as you can see here. They give you default fonts, because some people find, for example, dyslexia, reading certain fonts helps them to read it clearer. So I'm going to show you how to change them later in the Extras and Advanced Settings Editor. But again, you can change them quickly by clicking on them, and whatever you highlight, or if you don't highlight anything, it would do the whole document and change the fonts for you. Also the font option is the foreground colour, so let's change that to red, as you can see all the text is now red, and also change the background colour if required, and I should do that to yellow. Again, it's just a shortcut key, it's easy to do, do it from Clara than doing the settings in your actual word. And go back to font, and I'm going to change back to default, and again I'm going to make the fonts black just for this video tutorial. There's your fonts option. Spacing. So click on spacing. We can actually spread the letters between each word apart. So if I click that button once and I press it again, it changes it further apart. So that makes you see each letter individually better within a word. So you can then read it. Some people find that helpful, but not too many. I find most people find line spacing quite helpful. And also paragraph spacing is quite helpful as well. Again, it's all about personal preferences. So there's our first five options. Scanning, play, stop, different fonts, and your spacing options. Now, let's have a look at homophones. Homophones are words that sound phonetically the same but have different meanings. There's many of them like to, practice, where. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to type something out and use that as an example. Newcastle. So there we go, there was a man from Newcastle, and if I click on the beginning, you want to check your worker document, come up to show homophones and left click it. 
and it would turn every word blue that has another word that phonetically sounds the same has a different meaning so you see it's highlighted there so now I can check that before I do if you're not happy with all your homophones highlighting blue you prefer a different color you might have trouble seeing the blue within that white background come up to settings and I want to go along to the tab that says check left click that now go right down to the middle you've got homophone settings left click that and this is where you change the color here highlight color also you might decide a lot of these homophones you don't get confused with so you can even click on the ones you don't want to use and exclude them from the check if you need to but there's more settings for that I'll show you later also you can check your homophones as you're typing and dictating so every time you come across a homophone this will pop up for you to check it that can kind of slow you down a bit you might want to do it at the end but again it's personal preferences so I'm just going to click OK and try it out so with the cursor at the beginning of your document I'm now going to click the check button so I'll click homophones to show my homophones and then you click check to check them and as you can see the box pops up so there's three other words that there. sound phonetically the same if I hover over there they are and you can hear so listen to there they are and then you can hear how it's pronounced which is really useful on its own also if I click over In meaning the place the cat was there now you don't have to click just hover over and it'll read back so if I come over to more definitions a location other than here that place in or at that place in that matter to or toward that place change all and at the bottom there you can see context and that's where I'm using the word in what context in the sentence there is a man there is so now what I can do is choose whether or not I want to change that word so there. so at the bottom it says in or at that place the cat was there or I could choose to do with or belonging to them there so you can choose which is the correct one you need so you can go through all your homophones and check them and if you've got more than one homophone it will go through each one checking them one by one really handy option or you might just choose to ignore all which you can do as well ignore all and now just ignore them now to get rid of the blue I want to come back up click back on homophones and select clear so I'm going back to my other document And I'm going to look at the spell check option, which is really powerful as well, because it actually reads back the definition for you as well, and also gives you synonyms all in one. So, let's create a few spelling errors there. I know there's some here anyway. There we go. So, if I click on the beginning of my spell check there, and if I click check, it's now ready to do my spelling. So, if I move this over, I mean, I can move this over to see the actual sentence here, but the context is down here on the right anyway. But now the conditions were quite different. So now I need to choose which is the correct word. So I'm looking for conditions there. Conscience. You can see conditions. I've got conditions here. If I hover over. Conditions. Conations. And you can see how that sounds the same as well. So it's trying to give you spelling suggestions. Now, this is the one I want, but you might also decide further down. You actually want to see. Check. It. You might decide, actually, I would like to use circumstances. circumstances. So I could click on that, and if I click change, it would then change, change to that word. And you can always check the definition of that word and the meaning by coming up to Your the right Your overall here. circumstances or condition in life, including everything that happens it, to you, the state. And then it gives you an example. If you don't like the readback feature and it's annoying, you can always click this button here, and then you'll have no readback if you decide. But I'm going to actually change this to conditions and click to change. change. Now if I just click change it will only do one spelling and stop. I actually want to check my whole document so if you come down to the option here which says spell check all that will go through all the spelling through my whole document. Or if you need more information on that word why not select look up conditions here. It will go online and then you can check here on the web page more information on that word including readback features. Again really good option. But I'm just going to click spell check all and I'm going to click change and again another word and you can go through all of them and check whether they're right or wrong you'll also see there's a little image here that brings up as well we really useful so you can identify with that word and don't forget your synonyms down bottom left hand corner if you come across a word that you want to keep ignore and it will ignore that word or if you made the spelling wrong for your whole document you could use the change your option 
and that suggestion you made for the correct spelling will then change that for you through your whole document. Again, it's totally up to you. But I'm just going to click ignore all for now. Yeah. And click, click OK. So there's your spell check. Also, we've got a dictionary built in. So if I was to hover over conditions and highlight that word by double tapping. Conditions. This window pops up. Conditions. A, a, a nice quick out of particular conditions. A nice quick easy dictionary. If I hover over it, a state at anything. a particular time, a mode of being or form of existence of a person or thing, an assumption on which rests the validity or effect of conditions. Which is really good because as you're doing your work or typing, you can then stop, check that word quickly, and it just keeps your workflow going. Also, if you click this little button here, it will bring up the website, and then you can check that word from there as well if you need to. And click close. By the way, that also works online. So, let me go to the Magna Carta. So, I'll just highlight a word, rain. Rain. And you see the dictionary pops up again, and it'll give me the definition of that word. Also, while I'm in Internet Explorer, I'm just going to click at the beginning and I'm going to click play and see what happens. The reign of King John was in always unlikely and, in most, dreadful. He was born in 1160. And you see how it starts reading back just by clicking at the beginning. Now, with Google, it's a little bit different. So let me go back there because that's an image. Unless I've got Claro Capture, I don't want to use that. So I'm just going to go to Wikipedia and select any site doesn't really matter for this example so if I was to click on the beginning it's not going to work it won't play Watch. but now the conditions were quite different so what you need to do is highlight what you want to read back so I'm going to highlight that paragraph and a click play listini w -E 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 is a and it will read back for you but bear in mind it won't highlight it like it does in Internet Explorer Firefox okay just a word of warning there but it still reads back for you so I'm going to minimise that and go back to my Word document. Make sure you click on the Word document to bring you options at the top. Come up to the Predict option. Now I'm going to click Control N and show you how this works. Now you're probably thinking of predictive messaging on your phone. I think it's a little bit different in the sense that you can use specific vocabularies, for example, science, physics. You could use uh, a physics dictionary or medical. Let me show you. So let's just turn on predict. I'm going to tap it once. When it's highlighted, it's on. Now you can see it on the right here. So I'm going to hold the left button and just drag that to the left point there. And I'm going to type something. Morning. But it's not giving me anything. So if I right click here on the window. So what I've done here is it's got selection first and contains. So let me drag this over for you. So it's only going to show me words that first contains the letter M and then contains the other letters anywhere. So that could be kind of random. What I probably want is completion. Let me show you the difference. So now when I type, so let me type. Now you can see where I've done MOR, it's come up with all the words beginning in MOR rather than randomly with the first letter and then the next letter could be anywhere. So what I was looking for was morning. So if I then click the F1 button. Morning. It puts morning in there for me. Now you can change how you want it predicted. So if I click right click, you might just want words phonetically. And now I was looking for elementary. elementary. So now if I press F3 function key, it puts the word in for me and speaks it back. Windows follow cursor. As I type, it will follow. And you can see how effective this could be once you start Let using key. it. And you can see how effective this can be, not just for spelling, but also visualising your work as you're going along if you get stuck. But I prefer not to follow, it gets in my way, so I tend to right click and untick that, and then left button, and I can drag it out of the way. Well, I've got prediction, I'm going to untick it, but I'm going to go to the settings and show you where prediction is here. Select the prediction tab. And easier settings here. So if I click use prediction, I'm using a prediction dictionary pharmacy. So you can choose which dictionary you want to use so it starts predicting those words. So if I chose philosophy, it will give me predicted philosophy words. Same goes for architecture or creative writing.
or sociology entirely up to you but I'm going to show you how you can add your own dictionary now currently on phonetic I prefer completion again it's your prerogative so with my prediction dictionary I'm including a basic dictionary for basic words as well not just pharmaceutical words also I've got predict next word so as you type it will predict the next word you can untick that if you don't want that to happen Learn prediction, it will automatically add new words. Spell check before adding, learn word order, sort frequency, and save dictionary when exit. So that will automatically save your words as you type when left on. And again, that will improve the prediction options. On the prediction list, when it comes up, we could show the ignore words if required. Windows follows curse, so again, I showed you that where you can follow you as you type. You can have your list done, you see bottom right hand corner, alphabetical order or by order of likelihood. Again, it's your own preference. I find by order of likelihood is better than alphabetical. Also, predict after how many letters. You might decide one letter is not enough. You might be fine with smaller words, but longer words, for example, you might change that to four. So the window will only pop up with prediction. Let me come back down there. Prediction entries, currently five. You could have more. You might want ten in the list. To choose from and minimum word length you might say well one's okay I want a minimum word length to only come up with the words longer than four so again you can choose that option there so we've got font so you can choose for example the font you find most comfortable I shall leave it on Arial you've got your background color and your font color you can change as well just going to change to a more purpley movie color and click OK. I will show you later how to actually create your own list in the prediction dictionary. In fact, while I'm here, because I want to keep the workflow going on this and you're learning, I want to do that now. So I'm going to turn off prediction. Now to do that, we need to go to extras and at the bottom you have an option called advanced settings editor. Click that. And here we go. So, you remember I told you before about choosing your own fonts and the settings? Well, here you can have your free fonts that you might want to be able to access quickly to change in Word. And that's where you change them as default. But I'm going to skip all that. I want to go straight to training prediction because that's what we're looking at. So, we've seen in the settings option prediction, and this is your font settings. So, let me show you how this works. So, let's open a document. I'm going to use this Magna Carta document and open up my settings. And I want to create a new prediction dictionary so it brings out the kind of words I'll be using in my essay or the work that I'm doing. So I need to create a new dictionary so if I click new and I'm just going to call this history. So I'm creating a prediction dictionary and there is history. And here's my words in my history list but you can see I've got nothing. I mean I could add individual words that way or I could export my words or remove ones that I've got in there or even import them from a document. As I've got my work at the back there, I just want to copy that and add that to my prediction dictionary for when I type so I can pull out the kind of words I require. So what I'll do is I come up here, first thing I could choose is learn new words. If I click that, it will learn any new words. And it will also spell check them at the bottom there before it does it. So let Claro go through its phase. It will add all words from that document because there's currently nothing in my prediction dictionary at the moment. But if I already had a database in there, then it will add additional words that I've found and improve the prediction in the future. And there we go, let's have a little look. So the words it's added. Let me scroll down. So I'll scroll to the top. Any you don't want, you could just click remove. And then we can select learn word frequency, how often words come up in that document. So when it starts predicting, it's more likely to bring up those words. So if I click learn word frequency, it will also do that. And then you can learn word order in what order they come out. So now I've created my own dictionary of words. Again, I can add stuff. Magna Carta, click OK. And scroll down, there's Magna Carta. And again, you can delete words that you don't want. So, I'm happy with that. I could rename it or delete it. But I'm going to keep that. Way. So, if you come to do your prediction, so let me click Control N. Turn on prediction. Go to settings. I can then should be able to choose a new prediction. Let's have a little drop down menu. I should have one there called history. 
and all the relevant words click OK and let's give it a go and you can see as I typed MAG it's come up with Magna Carta right up there so that's really useful if you're doing law maybe or medical degree or sociology not just for spelling just maybe to visualize your work if you get stuck as you're typing as well could be a really good option a lot of people kind of write that option off and don't use it but just bear that in mind so I'm going to turn prediction off and I'm going to get rid of this document and go back to the original one back in the car now come to the save option now I showed you earlier about scanning off so we scan anything to a word document be it from a PDF or something you scan from paper book from your scanner how about saving that as an audio file if I highlight that text or control A but I'm just going to highlight couple paragraphs the reign, the reign of King John was in always unlikely Click stop if you don't like it read back go to settings go to advanced then untick and it won't read back to you automatically but I like prefer to leave that if that's okay so I've highlighted those paragraphs go to save and select save as audio and choose where you're going to save it to click the drop down menu you can save it as a wave or as Windows Media Audio. It's entirely up to you again. Just click Save and you'll add that as an audio file. And again, you could drop that into Dropbox, couldn't you? Or just upload it straight onto your iPod or phone or recorder just to listen to on the move. But I like this next option as well, which is really good. I'm going to highlight that text. This time, I'm going to choose a second option down, Save as Video. Now we can save that text as a video and it will read back for you. So if you've got a smartphone, iPad or anything, you can then read the text and listen to it at the same time. A great way to input that information. Before we do anything, you've got to decide what media you're using. Have you got an iPhone? Click that and then it will do the iPhone. I think it's the M4 thing. Android, you could use Windows Media Video. Probably the better quality because the files are not that big anyway. Or you might just have an iPad or iPad landscape you've got different options there you can see you've got your iPod Nano or Classic so I'm going to do this argument sake just for Windows Media Video and you see the icon changes there to show you there's all my text I could change the font for example again you can choose whatever font you want and change the colour as well also background colour let me just add a background colour yellow just to show you that really brings out the black text a lot better. Now I'm ready to go. So if I click create, choose where I'm going to save it to. I should save it on my desktop. You'll find it opens up automatically anyway. So I'm just going to call this history. And click save. And let it do the rest. Now give it a little while and you'll see a bar pop up near the bottom indicating how it's going see bottom right hand corner it's now creating that Windows Media video for us obviously depending on the size it could take a while but as this document is only small and almost there and it opens up automatically the reign of King John was in always unlikely and in most dreadful he was born in 1166 or 1167. And you can see how powerful that is, especially when you're on the move. Great option. So I'm going to click exit. Well, with the save option, why don't I open up Internet Explorer? Highlight the text where I got it from. So I'm going to highlight that text there. Go up to save and select save as audio. Again, you can save it off the internet as audio if you prefer that quickly. The same goes for highlighting your text and selecting save and save as video. So now I'm coming to the extras option. Click on extras. We have screen ruler which is great because it keeps you focused on what you're reading on. Depending on what you choose. Currently you see I'm on ruler here. So if I hover down. If you find that's too wide. Let me move that over so you can see that better. And put it over there. We can come up here to the right, hold the left button and then drag your ruler size there. You might prefer just a line or a whole paragraph. You can change the colour. You might decide that you use a certain tint to help you read that text clearly there. 
So you might have a tint of blue, for example. And then if I come over to Opacity, drag that to the right, you can just add that little tint there to help you read the text clearly. And I'll turn that off. Outside ruler is the outside, we can see it's dark. We can change that by clicking the change color here and then adding opacity if you require it or darker as so. Also shade above ruler so you can use it as a ruler that way down so you only get shade or you might prefer shade below ruler and you might prefer that option better. Again you've got total control over that. Also you've got underline so if you just want an underline traditional ruler like that and you can reuse your going down you're more than welcome and you can change the thickness of that as well there and again you can change the color and add opacity to that transparency if required again you've got the option again of shade above or shade below and then you can change that color there shade and that works quite well I think I don't know what you think again personal preferences also you have a total overlay color like a tint this works the same as Claro view but you just keep a nice little tint there and again Choose the colour you want the tint for. If you can't find a colour you want, go to Define Custom Colours and play around the colour palette there, or even add your own custom colour there. Entirely up to you. And then you get that little tint that you want. As so. Some people have tests and they find colours do help, so definitely look into that. I'm just going to go back to Underline a second. Because what I want to do is click the little tick here so it minimizes. Now you're probably wondering where it's gone. If I come down to my toolbar, there she sits there, screen ruler. So I want to close it, I can right click. But what I've done on purpose is I want to open up Wiki and show you that you can use it anywhere, any application you want to read. So that's another great little option there. If you want to close screen ruler, right click it and exit. The reason why it runs separate, you can run these programs separate of Claro everything in extras screen ruler view capture the reason is you might not want to run Clara so you can run them separate you'll notice when you install it you will get them separate but you can assess them through extras anyway now Clara view is a tint overlay color so again you just add your transparency try and find a color unless you know your color you might want a pastel color if not go to color palettes here and even go into define custom colors so you should be able to find playing around with that the exact color you need and click OK and those overlay colors will work everywhere as I say it's an overlay code whatever application you open up so if I click minimize sits down the bottom here if you don't want it click on it and close it extras Claro capture another good option click on that you know when you're doing research online, sometimes you're in a hurry, you might add it to your bookmarks, you might even lose your sources. Now click hide with this, not going to happen. So let's say we're doing a bit of research on collaborative software. So I'm going to highlight, maybe I might want that as part of my research. Collaborative soft Click the capture button and wait, and a little indicate will come up in the middle. And there you see. So now if I click show, everything you've highlighted is there. Really important here, as you well know, would be the when you assessed it. Collaborative. And the link that you got it from as well. Fabulous little option. So now what we can do is we can send it to Word, PowerPoint if you require, using that part of the presentation, or just like clipboard, copy and paste. I'm going to send that to Microsoft Word. And then if I come down, we should now have that in Microsoft Word. I'm just going to minimize that, but not close it. So I'll click hide. And there's my text that I've got and my source underneath. Really simple, but I think really powerful option. Now, if I want to go back to show, let's just say you go to another website and there's something else you want from a different source. So click hide so you can see the screen. I'm just going to choose any link there just to show you and scroll down. So say there's something here that you want. So I'm going to highlight Pacific Seas and Typhoons and that and click capture again. 
again wait for it to capture it will indicate that in the middle and then it's telling you that you've captured it click show and now we've got two sections now let me open up that word document we had before I put my first source in say you're doing this a day later you might want to put it in the same document we can do that by clicking a little arrow and select send item to current Microsoft Word and then it will put that into Microsoft Word you might want to organize all your research and sources into certain documents that's a way of copying them in also little arrows you can just copy and paste that way if required we can add indents go back to outdent we can move item top you might actually want that at the top of your list of sources and you see it's gone to the top and also audio note you can add your own audio note so if I click record and I've started recording so I'm going to say this is a bit of research I did on October 2015 regarding Pacific Typhoons and I need to do a bit more research click stop if I click the little arrow you can see that all your notes now there that I can play it back or save as a file so it's good for little notes for yourself or audio notes on your research also we have the edit button here settings exporting so you can export the items headings create table of contents in word if you want and even create a bibliography in word so if I click create bibliography in word then click send to Microsoft Word and click hide click hide you can see it's giving me a bibliography at the bottom for my websites as I say really really powerful option you have to go to references in Word and then you can choose there what style you want as well also you've got the capture button default action as you can see by pressing the button it's capture selected text but you can also capture highlighted text in Word which is good as well and capture screen selection so I'm going to click to the arrow just to the right and click capture highlight text in Word so let me open up a Word document and I might say right let's highlight and I might make make that red something of interest might make that another colour or just leave it as red so now as you see if I select the option here capture highlighted text in Word and click capture and then click show it's showing me the ones that I've highlighted in Word so another way just to gather all your information from different documents if you want if you don't want something just click X X and X again gets rid of it also capture screen section so let me open up Google tap off that and click the arrow on the right capture screen selection so again hold the left button create a rectangle around you want and it will capture that as an image as you can see again you probably use that more for pictures than that than anything else and then again you can use the option to choose where you want to send that to so that's a powerful little option it's hidden away in extras but make sure you use that accessible portable document format well let's open a PDF go to my documents I've got a PDF in my history folder I think I want to use the other one because there's slides for your note taker and there's a PDF let accessible PDF work and there's my text then standard text you can use this option if you don't want to convert it using the scan option I showed you earlier which was scan scan from PDF now if I click on the beginning and click play the reign of King John was in always unlike and it plays back you can zoom in and out if you required or you can choose web view I prefer that view better actually highlight over it the reign of King John was in always unlikely uh as you highlight it will read back for you so I'm going to click exit so that's in your extras as well you've got your speaking calculator and advanced settings which I showed you only a little bit of earlier so we'll go to settings quickly just a quick overview of everything so speech we know we can go advanced change your text colors and you read back features like echoing click back 
pronounce no it's not pronouncing the word properly you can make it pronounce it properly by phonetically spelling it I come across a person a while ago whose name was uh, play it back for you money money but it was actually pronounced you actually had to say it as money so this is how it's phonetically spoken money and this is how it should sound money money every time it read in a document it's reading back that way which is wrong so if I put it spell it phonetically how it should sound which should be money money if I click add every time that reads back now in a word document it will read back how the pronunciation is spelled the second option that's kind of a good little option actually also save as audio file click on that same as I showed you there with the options highlight what you want you can save as audio file or document this is a test of the current voice and again that will just test the voice for you so view we looked at the little bits here view we only looked at toolbar active window you can untick what you don't want you might go actually I don't need predict spacing is no good for me and you might decide fonts are no good so if we click OK you then disappear in your toolbar again all your personal preference but I'm going to leave them on also you can maybe have different styles that you might want in your toolbar so if I click OK you've got a different style there I like that style actually it works quite well click settings and go to view and choose which you want there show captions which will show you what each option does with the text and again small medium or large toolbar depending on your preference prediction we looked at check this is your spell check so when you double tap a word so let me double tap a word bordered and it brings up the dictionary there you hover over extend on all sides of similar and it reads back so with a check option that is checked so you can uncheck that if you don't want to use a dictionary tooltip you can choose which format you want example showing pictures you can show spell checker show meanings if you want within your spell checker and show parts of speech if required scan option we had a quick look over as well so you've got a rough idea of that which I believe leaves us help files that are really good have a look at them here on the left and the index also you can undock the toolbar so if I click that it unhooks it from the top so then you can drag it where you want drag it to the top it will hook back in or you can close just want to show you quickly go to extras and open advanced settings to finish these are your general options we looked at your fonts but you can export your settings by clicking export so you can import them at a later date if you want to keep all your settings that you've chosen and you can also import those settings again check for updates and then it was given an update you can see screen ruler there's one there that I need to download so check that as well and launch online support if you need help this is your home and phone options that I didn't show you yet I want to show you quickly you see how the settings are split from advanced settings and your standard settings so let's go to advanced settings to add your home and phones so let me show you what I mean quickly let's do a quick one there we've got a few there now, we've got you and they sound phonetically the same you, you and the letter U so the first word you at the top is telling you at the bottom description of the word, you can add to that if you want as long as you can understand what that word means and then you've got the alternatives there, it doesn't give you the meaning because those words are separate within the homophones so if I want to add one to this I could click edit and I could add it separate by a comma so let's just do this as an example I might have just have YU you as a word click OK so now if I scroll down and go to you you can see it's added so every time you type the word you and we select homophones it will give you these four words now problem is it's not going to give you the definition of that word I just put that in and made that up you can add your own words but this is what you need to do so I need to add that word YU as the main word at the top then add these words additionally as alternatives let me show you what I mean so if I click add I'm now going to add that word you 
Y, and U. The alternative words you can see on the left are U, U, again, U, and of course, the original one, which was U. So every time I type in Y, U, I will get an alternative of those words at the bottom there to come up so I can check them. So I need to give the description of my word I've just created. Just for this example, you can use proper homophone words, but you might even want to add words as well. So I'm going to put in there, can I just make that up, a wild rabbit, but that will do, click OK. So every time if you put in a sentence Y, U, it will give up these alternatives here for, then you can choose which is the correct one, so click OK. Now you're going to have to add that word again, so if you open up the word U, and then you need to add the alternatives in there if you want them in there as well. So you need to add the word where you know you get confused with. So you might have another word, rung, rung. It might be another word you might get confused with, run. So you could add run into that. It's all chosen. So clicking edit and adding run and separating it. So that's a way of playing around with the homophones and setting up what you require. And if you don't want anything, click on it, like there, and click delete, and it'll get rid of the homophones you don't want. Training prediction I showed you quickly before. History, or you can choose a default one, for example, pharmacy, or you might be doing philosophy. And there you go, in that prediction, there's 386 words, but again, you can add to them, or if you prefer, delete. Spelling. Here on the right will show all your spelling errors here you've done, and here on the left is your spelling correction and you can choose to have them auto-corrected and make sure you choose close Microsoft Word and Clara before syncing so all these corrections which so every time I spell that word wrong it will then do an auto-correction for me from Word in a built-in auto-correct which is quite handy also any spelling data we can then I've got none there but we can transfer them into your spelling correction as well and choose whether or not you want to sync them into Word to autocorrect as well so you've got total control over that there is more when you go into depth with it but that's the basics to get you up and running you can see it's a fabulous bit of software but it covers a lot of what you need thanks for watching